2009 marked the bicentennial of Darwin's birth and the 150th anniversary of his landmark book, On the Origin of Species. Around the globe, supporters of Darwin planned a year-long celebration. In Germany, one of the largest Darwin anniversary events took place in the city of Stuttgart at its State Museum of Natural History. The exhibition was directed by German paleontologist Gunther Beckley, one of the museum's curators. We had about 100,000 visitors and the complete exhibition together with the program that was accompanying this uh, exhibition was uh, one of the largest, if not the largest event uh, in the course of the Darwin year celebrations in Germany. Beckley decided to use the exhibition not just to celebrate Darwin's theory, but to make clear to the public that there was no debate about Darwin's ideas among scientists. In order to refute the growing idea of intelligent design, Beckley decided to include a display on the bacterial flagellum. The reason why we selected the flagellum as the poster child to basically expose intelligent design was that the bacterial flagellum has a kind of iconic status. We built a mobile model of the bacterial flagellum and had this animation to show that it could originate naturalistically. The exhibit highlighted the type 3 secretion needle complex as an explanation for how the flagellum could have evolved. In addition to an exhibit about the flagellum, Beckley came up with a display to dramatize for visitors the overwhelming scientific evidence for Darwin's theory. It was a balance with books on it. And the plan was on one side of the balance we would have all the books against evolution, books by creationist, intelligent design proponents. And on the other side of the balance, we would have one book, The Origin of Species, but the balance goes down on the side of the one book because this is the real heavy evidence. But the display didn't have quite the result Beckley intended. And I made one big mistake. I read the books on the lightweighted side, the apparent lightweighted side. And what I recognized to my surprise is that the arguments I found in those books were totally different from what I heard either from colleagues or when you watch YouTube videos uh, where the discussion is around intelligent design versus neo-Darwinian evolution. And I had the impression on one side that uh, those people are mistreated, their position is misrepresented and on the other hand that uh, these arguments are not really receiving an appropriate response and they, they have merit. One of the books Beckley read was Darwin's Black Box. I read Darwin's Black Box where he basically introduces this uh, concept of irreducible complexity. Beckley soon realized that proposed Darwinian explanations for the origin of the flagellum didn't work. The type 3 secretion needle complex was no help because it probably developed after the flagellum. This is a reduced flagellum motor and not a precursor of a flagellum motor. In addition, the suggestion that natural selection could have gradually built a flagellum by co-opting parts from other systems didn't make sense. It is graphically convincing, but if you know the ontogenesis of the, the flagellum motor, then it, it is completely ridiculous. It cannot where you cannot build the flagellum by just adding uh, outside of the cell wall some, some protein elements on it and make the, the flagellum longer and longer. Uh, this kind of scenario doesn't make sense in terms of the ontogenesis of the, the structure. Like Behe, a couple of decades earlier, Beckley began to dig deeper. And so when I read those books on, on intelligent design and, and the books by Mike Behe and, and Bill Damsky and uh, the, the book by S Steve Meyer were not uh, existing then. Uh, so um, I thought there is some merit to it and I made contact with uh, some of the representatives of the intelligent design movement. The next thing I found out is that they are much different from what I expected. They are open-minded. They're, they're not religious fanatics who try to push a kind of theocratic system onto society uh, under the uh, label of, of, of intelligent design. They are really interested, is this neo-Darwinian story really true or is there scientific reason to doubt it? Beckley didn't fit the usual stereotypes of a Darwin skeptic. 
So many people will think uh, somebody who comes to doubt the neo-Darwinian process and, and embraces intelligent design probably was religious from the very beginning, probably is an evangelical Christian and has his axe to grind, his, his religious axe to grind. I came via a totally different path to the views I, I hold now. I'm coming from a family background which is totally secular, agnostic, was not baptized, didn't uh, uh, join any kind of religious education, never went to church, so I was completely irreligious. Was not even interested for most of my life in, in philosophical or metaphysical questions. I was interested in nature, in animals and in natural sciences. Beckley publicly disclosed his support for intelligent design for the first time in 2015. 